Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura. In this video, I am going to be bringing you along with me at the office for a week to show you what I'm eating for lunch and what I'm packing for myself. I don't know about you, but I cannot eat a reheated microwaved steak. It is just not the same. So I have gotten really creative over the years. I lost 100 pounds commuting to the office every day, and I had to get really creative on delicious meat carnivore options of things that I could eat while I was at work or didn't have access to a microwave sometimes uh, or just things that actually still tasted good and were more delicious than the tempting food that my coworkers were eating. So stay tuned for this video and I'll bring you along with me over the next week and give you lots of great meal ideas that you could pack for a lunch. First up for lunch today, I have my version of what I call deli meat. It is a thin sliced reversed seared tri-tip. I actually made an entire video on how I made this. It was my previous video right before this one if you want to check out that entire process. But because it's like, it's almost like eating a really thick sandwich meat, I am just going to grab some salt, uh, sprinkle some salt on it. And then it tastes delicious cold. It's not like eating a steak. It's almost like eating some really thick cut roast beef. And so that cold version uh, really tastes delicious. So my lunch today is a, a little over a pound of smoked deli meat that I made out of a tri-tip. For lunch today, I have what I call a loaded chicken salad. The awesome thing is I really don't have a recipe for this. I just use whatever I got and throw it in. So I usually use canned chicken just because that's what I have on hand. But you also could do this, like make a bunch of chicken the night before, eat half of it, and then chop up the other half for a chicken salad the next day. Inside of it, you could throw in whatever kind of mayonnaise you're comfortable with. I typically use the Primal Kitchen mayonnaise. But again, how strict you want to be is going to determine if you're worried about those seed oils or not. And then I just kind of load it up with whatever I got. Uh, I'm not looking for anything other than a really good chunky consistency. So I put in a little bit of sour cream so I'm not using as much mayonnaise. Um, chopped up a bunch of bacon. I always throw in some kind of shredded cheese or I'll grate my own cheese if I happen to have a block on hand. And then you could get a little crazy. I put in some pickles because it's not strict carnivore. But it's not chicken salad to me unless it doesn't have that like tangy crunch. Throw in some salt, pepper. I usually use adobo because it's got that nice garlic flavor. If you were more keto, you could put in some like chopped pecans. I bet that would taste good. Oh, I did throw in some feta cheese this time too. I thought that might add a little tang for it. And then at this point, it's so good. You could just eat it with a spoon. I could take some carnivore snacks, beef slider. I could eat it like beef crackers and chicken salad. Pork rinds are a really good dipper, so I'll just use a fork and put some of this on a pork rind and scoop it. Um, this would last me two or three days for lunch for sure, especially eating it with some pork rinds because I'm trying to show you guys a different meal every day. I am actually going to split this with some coworkers. I have a coworker who's keto, so I think he got some romaine lettuce and he's going to fill this up. You could use a low-carb tortilla. They make those cheese wraps. So a cold cheese wrap stuffed with a bunch of chicken salad. This is one of my go-tos. I could keep it in my fridge at work and then eat it like every other day for the week. And then I don't feel like I'm eating the same thing every day. But no specific recipe. Pick the consistency that you like and really throw in whatever you got on hand. It's a really good uh, leftover user. Lunch today kind of started off as a disaster with my meal prep last night, but it turned out okay. It was one of my staples, which is a taco meat taco bowl. I ended up making some carnivore nachos or like a carnivore taco salad, but no matter if you're carnivore or keto, some version of taco meat is an amazing foundation for a fantastic meal. You can add dairy, um, you can add a lot of veggies if you like. There's so many options and varieties. I prefer to make my own taco seasoning. I use uh, a recipe from a blog that I found. I will link it in the description below. And then I mix up my ground beef. I like to drain the fat. And then just like you would do a packet, I add the seasoning after I drain it and mix in a little bit of water with it. The seasoning has some chili powder, 
garlic, salt, pepper, onion powder, uh, and paprika, a few other ingredients, but I'll link the exact recipe that I have used for several years down below. I also thought for this video, I would try to get fancy and make some little cheese, melty cheese bowls. And so I took some little pieces of cheese and put them over top of a muffin tin and put in the oven. Did not work. I think I found out later you should melt it, wait till it starts to reharden, and then let it form over that. So I gave up and ended up just making some little cheese chips by using the... Um, cookie sheet, putting it in at 400 and waited till the cheese got nice and melty. And they turned out like little mini tostada shells. I also found out later that maybe not using sharp cheddar would have worked because sharp cheddar tends to separate. Had I used like a cheese blend or something, um, it would have been good. But these turned out like little cheese crackers. So I had a big pile of taco meat that I took to work today. Again, I um, fed my keto friend just because I was trying to use up all the meat that I cooked. He, again, used the same lettuce that he had yesterday. Used some lettuce boats, and I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to hot stuff. So I reduced the amount of red pepper flakes that you're supposed to use in this taco seasoning and didn't use any. And so he added some hot sauce to his, but I preferred mine either just plain with the meat, uh, some cheese and a little bit of sour cream on top. I also today put some, uh, I had the pork rinds left over from the chicken salad and piled that on top. But a normal week for me, I could make myself a big container of taco meat, a big container of chicken salad. I got my pork rinds all ready and I pretty much could alternate days and eat that for an entire week and probably wouldn't get sick of it. Now the next week, I might mix things up a little bit but that would be a good way to do a little bit of meal prep on a Sunday and have everything ready in just two quick containers uh, and be able to take that to work. So there you go. I'm going to finish these cheese chips. All right, today for lunch, I am having leftovers. Uh, leftover chicken, pork, uh, especially like a pulled pork I love reheated, and then also leftover chicken. I have some leftover grilled chicken thighs that I seasoned with a Greek spice blend from Spiceology that I'm loving. This would be really good with some hot sauce warmed up or tzatziki. If you were more keto, you could put it in a lettuce wrap again. I'm just gonna eat it plain today, but it's not really enough fat for me or calories, so I need some bacon. Bacon at work, you obviously could cook it ahead of time and maybe just warm it up, but I prefer to just cook it when I'm here, and I have three options for microwaved bacon at work. Uh, they are varied expenses and varied messiness levels. So I'm gonna explain that. So the first option is the best tasting, not very messy at all, but it is the most expensive. And that is using something like this. It's Hormel raw bacon that's in these special microwavable pouches. So you have this plastic pouch, you throw it in the microwave, microwave it for a few seconds, comes out and it's raw bacon cooked. All the mess is contained inside the plastic, really perfect. Best option, very pricey. 12 pieces of bacon, almost 10 bucks. It's like restaurant bacon prices. The other option is what we use most often in our family is not the tastiest, but it is definitely not messy and it's not too expensive for pre-cooked bacon. And that is this pre-cooked bacon from Costco. You get 50 slices. The price is going up a little bit lately, but it's not too bad. And so I just grab a couple slices. The kids use this a lot for breakfast. If all we're doing is making them two or three slices each for their breakfast, we use this quite a bit. Uh, and I can grab a couple slices for myself for lunch as well. The last option is by far the messiest, but it is also the cheapest. And that is just raw bacon cooked in the microwave. My mom actually taught me this and I was a little shocked that she did it and thought maybe it was like not even possible somehow, but she assured me. And so we are gonna use this method today, literally just using paper towels in a microwave and microwaving raw bacon. Uh, I'm doing this on a Saturday in the break room that nobody uses because you know that cooking all these bacons and having this mess is gonna make a big mess and it's gonna smell. So uh, we're gonna see how it goes. Took about three and a half minutes in the microwave, but that's legit. 
Like, it tastes amazing. And obviously, it's normal raw, raw bacon, so it's super cheap. But it was messy. Like, I had to sop up the grease with the paper towels. And then I actually took some, like, a sponge and dish soap and cleaned out the microwave. So you kind of have to know your surroundings and how much your coworkers are going to get mad about that one. But it's really good. All right, the Costco or Sam's Club pre-cooked bacon takes about 45 seconds, maybe a minute in the microwave. It is really thin. It's the thinnest of all of them. It's never going to get like really crunchy, like fresh cooked bacon. It definitely is pre-cooked. That one's crunchy because I kind of overcooked it, but it tends to be a little more chewy, almost like a bacon jerky. It's good. It's my least favorite tasting of the three, but it is really convenient, especially if you just want a couple pieces and you don't want a mess. Today is the last day I'm going to show you what I brought for lunch, but stick around to the end and I'll talk about some other common things that I didn't happen to bring this week, but are really good options. Today I brought some carnivore egg cups or egg muffins. These are everywhere on Pinterest. You can find recipes for carnivore, keto. Uh, you can make them as fancy or as plain as you like. I happen to just use a lot of leftover meat that I had. So ham, chicken, I put ground beef in here. Uh, you could use any kind of sausage. And then I also made some sausage patties out of the ground sausage that I bought. Whenever I'm looking for ground sausage, I make sure to find one that doesn't have corn syrup in it. You can find ones that might have sugar listed as an ingredient for curing, but if it has corn syrup as the second ingredient, it'll list carbs or sugar in it. I stay away from those and look for something that has zero grams of carbs and zero grams of sugar, and that's better, and that's what I try to stick with. I personally used about 12 eggs, a little bit of cream, which you could easily omit if you were trying to stay away from dairy, and I threw in all the meats. I greased it with bacon grease, and that way I can avoid a lot of the seed oils that I personally try to keep out of my diet. I think if you put the eggs in first before all the meat, then it'll pop out of the tin a lot easier, but I just happened to like throw all the meat in first. Um, mine stuck a little bit when I tried to pull them out, so if you pour the eggs in first, you'll avoid that. I baked mine at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, and then I pulled them out and let them cool down before I took them out of my muffin tins. These would also freeze very easily, so if you wanted to make a batch on the weekends and then bring one in the morning uh, for a quick breakfast if you needed a snack, but since I tend to just skip breakfast and eat two meals a day, then I have three or four of them I'll eat for lunch along with those extra sausage patties. Hard-boiled eggs are another good option that would require a lot less meal prep than this. I personally just can't do hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> I think you either love them or you hate them, and I definitely fall into the latter of those. So hard-boiled eggs are not something that I use regularly, but they are a really good, easy option. It's one of those things, like, I wish I liked it, but I just, I can't do it. Overall, I think if I was personally trying to aggressively lose weight, I would have omitted a lot of the cheese that I ate this week and stuck to keeping things a little more simple, maybe a little bit less of the processed meats and just stuck to a leftover piece of meat. But I wanted to give you some options. Everything that I did this week, too, also required a lot of meal prep, which is not something that I do this much of regularly. In general, I might have picked one of these things that I showed you and sprinkled it in through my week. And then I I personally tend to do a lot of burger patties. I eat out a lot, and typically once or twice a week, I'll go to a fast food restaurant and get some plain burger patties, maybe a little bit of cheese on it. Uh, and then I always fast at least one day a week at work. Even when I'm in maintenance mode, I just really like to incorporate a 48-hour fast most weeks, give my body a break. I pick the day that I'm the busiest, and then I skip a day. So I really I'm typically only looking for four days of meals a week. One or two of those, I'm going to eat out burger patties. And the other, you know, two or three days, I'll use one of these options that I showed you. So I'm not really doing that much meal prep during the week. As a reminder, I currently am eating dinner every night. And because I tended to eat more quick microwavable meals, I really love a fresh grilled steak. That's what helps keep the cravings away from me. And so I tended to do that in the evenings, maybe bacon and eggs if I was in a really quick hurry. But I can walk in the door and cook a steak in about 10 minutes. And so that's my quick and easy weeknight meal idea for you in one sentence is just to quickly grill a steak. 
Other than that, one of my best tips, if you're in a pinch and didn't prepare anything and you don't want to go get burger patties again, simply go to the grocery store. You can get some deli meat and cheese, uh, get a rotisserie chicken. Those are things that are very quick and easy, one item meals that can keep you full and satisfied throughout the week. Those are the tips I have for you today. I hope this was helpful to keep you on track. I know in the office environment, in the school environment, there's so much temptations with other people's foods. They do so many caterings and donuts and all the birthdays and things that you're celebrating. So really plan ahead. Make sure you always have good, nutritious food on hand. It's going to help you stay on track, avoid those temptations, and just really look forward to what you're eating. The only way that this way of eating is going to work for you is if you're really enjoying the food that you're eating, uh, and that's going to help you be successful long term. Thanks, guys, for sharing. Make sure to comment below on your favorite things you take for lunch, and then we can help give people ideas, and hopefully we can help everybody stay on track. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thanks.